don't think that he clearly understands the nature of biology. So I think this puts us in a very strong position of being able to say that neither of these philosophers really has understood the nature of biology versus the nature of mind. What they've tried to do is elide the differences and conflate them, running them together so that the processes of consciousness can be investigated by the ordinary uh, investigatory processes of biology. That is to say, you can essentially put the brain under a microscope and that'll tell us something about consciousness. I don't believe that's true. Dualism means two opposed natures. It must be understood absolutely with crystalline clarity that dualism has nothing to do with the supernatural. That's only one form of dualism. Supernaturalism is one form. There is also a natural form of dualism. And if these men had allowed themselves to think in terms of dualism, they would have immediately understood that. Rather than trying to say that dualism is a supernatural, implies the supernatural, and therefore we must get rid of dualism if we want to explain consciousness in material terms. So, we go back to Watson's quote. The crux of dualism is an apparently unbridgeable gap between two incommensurable orders of being that must be reconciled if we wish to justify our assumption that there is a comprehensible universe. I believe that Danette's, quote, virtual machine, unquote, or as he's put it elsewhere, the self with a capital S, very comfortably meets the definition of dualism. And unfortunately, by trying to say that it isn't a dualist, the mind-body isn't a dualist system, he wasn't able to say anything about the nature of mind uh, and as an informational state and how that interacts with the body. If you look at the mind as a uh, dualist informational state, quite separate from its physical substrate, that is to say ontologically separate, but intimately related, then this opens the path to a rational solution of the mind-body problem. Unfortunately, these authors, Danette and Searle, were the products of their era, and I don't think they fully understood the concept of dualism. So, the significance of this for psychiatry is that the primary claim of biological psychiatry is as follows. In some vital explanatory sense, mental disorder just is a, frame of, a form of brain disorder. I don't think that is, can be held. Accordingly, monism fails. There is now no model available to account for the claim that mental disorder is a form of brain disorder. So the whole biological a model in psychiatry, modern psychiatry collapses in a heap. It is unsustainable. It will fail for logical reasons, and biological psychiatry is now headed for the same place as psychoanalysis and behaviorism, and for exactly the same reasons. That is to say, it was logically incoherent. Thank you.